All right. It's good to be here this morning. If you got your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Book of Hebrews chapter 11. Amen. As I began to look into this this week, God began to bless my heart and mind. We talked a little bit and preached some uh, last week in the, in the message and everything concerning faithfulness. And uh, uh, we'll preach this morning on this thought just for a little while when faith works. Uh, amen. When faith works works. Amen. And, uh, you know, uh, without faith, the Bible says in verse six, and this is where that I took my, my, my thing from, uh, he says, it's impossible for us to please God. And, uh, you know, ever since I've been saved, I got saved December the 12th, 1978. And, you know, I've had a, a desire to be pleasing to God. And, uh, you know, he became my heavenly father and I didn't understood I did not have any uh, recollection of about a lot of things concerning living a Christian life. When I got saved by the grace of God, uh, God saved me, and I was just like a newborn babe. And, and I, you know, I had to start learning uh, along the way, and, and uh, uh, it took me a long time to understand faith uh, a little bit. But now God gave me the faith uh, to believe and trust in Him. Uh, you're not born with that, friend. The Bible says that we're begotten by the word and we're drawn by the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, he gives us the faith to believe that this is the infallible truth of God's word. This right here that we have today. Uh, uh, today, you say, well, it's, it's an old, old book and, uh, and everything. And the world's tried to disprove it. The devil's tried his best to, to discredit it. Uh, but friend, it's, uh, it can't be discredited this morning because the power of God is in this precious old book uh, that we have. Amen. And we, we believe uh, God through faith and accept the perfect work that Jesus done on the cross of Calvary. And friend, you and I here this morning that have accepted that is saved by God's marvelous grace. Amen. But there's faith that works down in our heart and life. And as that faith works uh, down through our life, uh, we learn to lean on it more and more and more and more. And we want to get into some of that and some of the, the individuals down through chapter 11, if God allows me to, uh, uh, that uh, took faith for face value. In other words, took faith for what it is and everything. And they moved upon that faith. And because they moved upon that faith, God's got them in uh, uh, honorable mention in the word of God and everything. The uh, little headline on my thing over here calls it the Hall of Fame uh, over here. And it truly is. It's the Hall of Fame. It talks about and starts with Noah and, and just goes right on down through Abraham and, and, and the different ones all the way down uh, and everything through a process of time. But, you know, you and I this morning... Uh, can enter into that hall of fame. Amen. We know people uh, in our life, a lot of them has outstripped us and went on and everything. If we were to, if we were to uh, say, let's, uh, we're going to get up a thing here and I'd like to, for you to submit names for people that could be put in the hall of fame of, of, uh, Enum Baptist Church and, and the hall of fame of, of, of the community up and down through Chucky here. Uh, uh, and everything like that there. And just in a little while, uh, I'd begin to get names and everything and everything. And, and with all of those names comes a testimony. With all of those names comes a, a, a life that was well lived for God. With all of those names comes uh, somebody that sacrificed uh, in order to have what the, you know, the name that they had uh, down here in this life and everything. And uh, I like to call them foundation stones of our community and everything because that's, it was their faith and, and, and their strength and, and their work and their labor and everything built this valley up and down through here and it built the foundation of this church. Amen. You go all the way back uh, to a time when it was just a little log house down here close to the river and everything and it was set aside and established and dedicated uh, to the people of this community and, and Enon Baptist Church uh, was born. The word Enon means by the, by the water uh, and uh, it, it was you know a little church started out down here in a little log house uh, with a handful of God-fearing people 
uh, that, that had a testimony down in their heart and life about the type of life that they lived and everything. And they, and they not only had a testimony uh, and everything, they worked down through the process of time. And when it come time to lay a lot of these, a lot of them are laying up here at, at, behind the severe church up here in the grave, in the graveyard. And, and, and they, they, they earned, they earned that testimony. Uh, that was preached about them when they was when they laid them to rest up here, and everything that you know they earned that, and they did it by stepping out on faith and, and by working and letting God work through them, and it's just like Noah and everything over there, which we are getting some of them if the Lord let us. But we will take off this morning uh, on this thought. Let's look at verse one. Listen to what it says this morning. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. And uh, uh, I thought about the evidence of things not seen. Now, you can't see faith this morning. Uh, I can tell you that I have faith. Amen. And James, we'll get into that here just in a little while. The book of James over there says that faith and works goes together and everything. You can't separate that and everything. Uh, I do know this morning uh, that when I lived for the world and, and Satan out there, I'd done all I could do. I was faithful to Satan uh, and everything. I was faithful to do the the, the, the stuff that, that he put in my way. I you know, I partied. I'd done, I'd done everything I could do. There were certain things I wouldn't do. Uh, because of fear, uh, but you know there was a lot of stuff out there that you know I followed him and everything. But then when uh, then my master changed, Amen. Uh, when I got saved by God's marvelous grace, Jesus stepped into the place where Satan once was, uh, Amen. And he filled that void down inside of me, and I no longer have uh, that hunger for a, a lot of those things out there because Jesus filled it up. Now, a lot of people out here in the world today is, uh, they know they need something, but they really don't know what they need. Amen. Uh, because it's not been, they've not listened to find out what's needful out there. The need is, uh, that God wants to save them, but to the uttermost. Amen. And if they'll open their ears and they'll hear and let God speak to them and let the Holy Spirit of God, you say, well, do they have to be in church? No. They don't have to be in church, but church is a good place to start. Uh, amen. Church is a good place to, to find, uh, find God. Amen. I'd like to think this morning, uh, that you and I that have gathered together here this morning, that God's going to be in our midst. Amen. You say, how does he come? He comes in the form of the Holy Spirit of God. God, this Holy Spirit, uh, he meets with us, uh, down here and then he begins to speak to our hearts and everything and he allows us, uh, to understand and to grow in grace and knowledge. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing what? By the word of God. Amen. And you say, well, preacher, you, uh, you're on this all the time. Well, that's all I've got. God made me a, a, a faith preacher. He, I preached by, by faith this morning. I never come with anything uh, laid out. I never come with anything rehearsed. I never come with anything memorized uh, and everything this morning. I come by faith. And the one that called me, Imam, is able to feel that. But I say there's a responsibility that comes my way. Amen. Down through this week, I've prayed, I've read, I've studied, I've looked, I've searched, I've worried uh, all, all week long. And then when it comes to this hour, amen, and I step behind this pulpit, amen, I, the precious Holy Spirit of God begins to envelop my mind and my heart and everything and, and begins to give me those things that I stand in need of. These little things that I've got on this little three by five index card right here and everything is just thoughts, it's reminders it's, uh, of what some of the things that I've, I've, I've preached or touched on, some of the things that God's given me uh, this week, amen. But I step out on faith every, every time, amen, uh, that God allows me to stand. That's all I have this morning. And then when, I, and when faith begins to work, when it begins to work, I just step in it, amen. Uh, it's like being down there next to the water and everything, and everybody's out there in, uh, swimming, uh, in the water and everything out there, and you're standing there looking at it. And, and I remember when I was just little, uh, when I go down next to the creek, I wanted to be in that water so bad and everything out there. But uh, because of the way that I was raised and different things like that right there, uh, uh, down through my life, and some of the older people up there, they 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 kept their young and scared of the water. 
and everything, stuff like that, because uh, there was a time that people thought that they caught polio out of the creeks and everything. Uh, you know, they did. I mean, it was a fear that was on people's hearts and everything. And they, you know, that stuff was told me by my grandparents and stuff like that. Oh, you don't need to be down there around that water and everything. And there was a lot of people, they couldn't swim. And when they got down, they thought, well, if they fall in the water, it's a death sentence. In other words, you know, I'm going to drown and everything. But I remember when I was just a little child uh, and everything, or just young and everything, and, and everything, I'd get out in the water just, just, to, just to get my feet wet and everything, just a little bit. And after a while, I thought, boy, that feels so good on my feet. Then I'd get on out there just a little deeper and a little deeper. And after a while uh, and everything, the, as the fear began to subside and everything, I found myself squatting down in the water, you know, and, and letting it come up on me and everything. And uh, I was lucky. Nobody had ever picked me up and throwed me out into the, into the creek and said, you know, swim or drown and everything. I was lucky. Nobody ever did do that. But now I've seen some people that did do other kids like that. And, and, uh, you'd never seen them back at the creek much anymore, uh, and everything. But, you know, I was allowed to move into it a little by little by little. And, and, and my, as my faith got stronger in my own abilities, uh, and everything, I would step on into the water a little bit deeper. Now, they scripture over in the Word of God, over there, I believe it's in Ezekiel, uh, over there talks about uh, son of man, he called him son of man, and he took him down to the river there, and he said, step into the water, and he stepped into the water, and after a while, he got out there to where he's just swimming, amen, now it takes a lifetime sometimes to get to the point where that your head's also sticking up out of the water, and you're treading water, and you're water over your head, and you're trusting God to keep you afloat, amen, uh, down here in this world. And uh, uh, these are people that we're, we're read about here in the Hall of Fame. These are the people that established and built this community uh, that we're preaching in this morning. Uh, these are people that stepped on out there and they got out there and they began to swim. And when the end of their life come and everything, uh, they, they got an a, a honorable mention. In other words, how many people could be in the Hall of Fame right today? Amen. We've got a few words, I mean, a few people's names in here from, uh, from Old Testament times all the way down through, uh, friend, but you and I are living in, in the day of grace. Amen. We're living in the, in the, in the acts of the apostles, uh, and the acts of the disciples. Now, you and I can't be apostles. We've not, I, we, we're not eyewitness of Jesus, but we're his disciples this morning. Uh, amen. We're walking and talking and preaching and living our lives according to that that was penned in the days of Home and everything for it to be a, a lamp unto our feet, as David said, and a light unto our path, and everything. And as we as we live our lives down here, and everything, it's a force that's unseen. Now, what is a force this morning? Everything. Uh, if I took, see, I ain't got nothing to do it with, and I've done walked out of the frame of the camera, but there's a flag sitting right over there. If I walked over there and I took a book and I waved it by that flag and everything and not touch it, uh, the wind that would come off of that book as I waved it backwards and forwards would cause that flag to move. Uh, it would move and everything. So that wind uh, is that force. In other words, that does something. Amen. I'm trying my best to let you know how faith works this morning. Uh, it's that wind that moves uh, that that's unseen. Amen. You and I can't see the wind this morning. It's transparent to us. We can feel the effects of it. Uh, we can see the effects of the wind this morning. Uh, but we can't tell where it comes from nor where it's going. Amen. Faith works like that. Amen. When you and I accept the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, we don't know how that he does it, but he does it. He changes you and I uh, from the person that we used to be into a child of God and teaches us how to live a godly life down through the process of our lifetime down here on this earth. Faith is this unseen force that helps us to what? To believe in Jesus, which gives us the hope of eternal salvation and great power. That's the first little thought that I wrote down there in my first thing. It's, it, it's an unseen force uh, that helps us to believe, Amen. Now let's let's try our best to explain that just a little bit this morning, and everything. Uh, those of you here that have raised children, uh, and they're just a week or two old, 
And when they get hungry, they what? Cry. And everything. That's the only way they've got telling you. That's the only way they've got telling you that they're hungry. They, they can't just say, Mom, I'd like you to fix beans and taters for supper tonight. I'm hungry. Yeah, you know, they don't do that. They've not learned to talk yet and everything. So when because the hunger pain comes in their stomach and they know there's something wrong, <coughs> excuse me, they begin to cry. And you can say, well, you know, little Johnny or little Susie uh, is, you know, they're hungry. See, that or they've messed on themselves. But anyway, you know, that's another thing. Uh, but you and I and everything, we, we, we learn uh, by what we hear and everything out there that something needs to be taken care of and everything. Now then, here the little one is, it's laying there in the crib, it's crying, uh, or you've got it in your arms, and the very instant they see that bottle, uh, or the very instant the mother takes it in her bosom, uh, and everything, if, if she's feeding like that, guess what happens? The crying stops. The crying stops. So, it knows that it's hungry. It knows that it's something, that in the very instant it sees something other like that there, it's taken care of. The very instant you and I realized that we was lost and undone without a Savior, friend, and everything, and God had a remedy for our lost condition, and his name was Jesus, friend. The very instant you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that insatiable hunger for all that, that you've put into trying to, trying to feed it, you can't feed it. You can't, you can't, you can't. The world cannot satisfy what needs to be inside of you. Only thing that can satisfy that is God. Amen. Uh, drugs can't do it. Alcohol can't do it. Uh, fleshy desires can't do it. Money can't do it. Uh, you know, uh, all of those, they can't, it cannot satisfy that. Uh, uh, a millionaire never has enough millions. A drunk never has enough alcohol. A drug addict never has enough drugs. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, it's why because it, it grows that that insatiable hunger. But a Christian, when Jesus moves into our heart and soul, Amen. There's a something that comes on to us, Amen, that the world don't understand. There's a peace that comes down inside of us. Uh, John chapter fourteen, uh, down in the latter, about verse twenty-two, somewhere right along in there, Jesus said over there, He said, "My peace I give unto you." Not as the world giveth, give I to you. In other words, God gives us a peace on everything. How do you get that peace? By faith, believing. That's it on everything. Friend, out there in the world and here at the church this morning, the only thing that's going to send you to hell is unbelief. That's it. It's no matter what you're, what you're involved in out there in the world, it doesn't matter. It, you know, those things doesn't matter. The, uh, when you stand before an almighty God, friend, uh, the one thing that's going to that's uh, keep you from going to hell is if you've trusted and believed in the name of the, that God sent into this world, his name shall be called Jesus. Amen. Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Amen. You believe in that. You say, how do you believe in that? By faith. How do you get that kind of faith? God gives it to you. That's how you get it, by hearing the word of God. By hearing a song, by hearing, uh, you know, and everything. You say, can people get saved under uh, gospel singing? Well, sure you can. Sure you can. Can people get saved down at the supermarket by you just witnessing to them? Sure they can. And everything. Uh, this book that we have right here, that we call the Holy Bible, does not need me. This stands alone. Amen. Uh, it's infallible. Uh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. And his name was Jesus. Amen. He doesn't need that. But God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that are lost. Amen. Uh, but to us that are saved, it is the power. And notice what it said there. It's the power of, 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 
of the word of God unto salvation. In other words, it's the power that we can have. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were, uh, were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by the which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Uh, righteous. God testifying of these gifts, uh, by it being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, uh, Enoch, when he was translated uh, that he should not see death, uh, was not found because God had translated him uh, Him. Uh, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Uh, for he, he, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Friend, faith this morning is one of the greatest powers that you possess as a child of God. By faith, by faith this morning. Did you realize this morning that a, a prayer when it is prayed uh, uh, by faith touches the throne room of God? Yes, by faith. The Bible says if you had what? Faith of the grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, be ye cast into the depths of the sea, and it would be, it'd be cast into the, into the depths of the sea. In other words, uh, he's talking about that if you just a little faith. Jesus prayed in another place. He said, oh, ye of little faith. In other words, he's talking to them. You know, they had a little faith. You know, if you had only asked, uh, believing and, and having faith in that. Now, there's not a one of us sitting here this morning that doesn't have a prayer request on her heart. Some or another, maybe some bump, some friend, somebody lost, some, you know, something drunk, some, you know, whether it's whatever. Amen. Whether it's, you know, whatever. Years ago, when I, I learned the, the strength of Matthew 6, 33, and, and, and I had read it time and time and time and time again over there, and uh, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you, and everything. That's just words without faith. It's just a, uh, it's just a, a phrase in the Bible without faith. But when you add faith to that, then that then that word becomes alive and God provides those things that you have need of. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all of these things. What is all of those things? If you'll go right on up above it up there, about 10 verses above it, and start reading about 10 verses above 33 and read back down through that, you'll have you'll find out over there that uh, you know, that there's a whole list of stuff given. God said you can have that. But you, it doesn't work till you have faith in it. I was, I was tied to a job. And uh, uh, I'll not mention any names. But I was tied to a job. And I thought that, that that's, you know, I, I, was, I got paid every two weeks. Every two weeks. And as I worked that job and everything, it became so burdenous to me. I mean, it, it, it became, it came, it become to the point where that, uh, it, I hurt to walk into that place. I, it, it hurt me so deeply and everything. But, you know, this little voice in the back of my head, and it says, you're in a trap. You can't go nowhere. You've got bills to pay. You can't go anywhere. Uh, you, your kids is in school. You can't go anywhere. You have to have this and everything. So you have to put up with it. And it don't matter how, what they put on you. You have to put up with this and everything. And, and I got to the point where that I would walk outside of the little department and everything and I'd stand outside to get a breath or two of fresh air and everything. And I'd pray and I'd weep. I'd literally weep standing outside of that building wanting, wanting God to give me some kind of relief, help me to get out of there. I, 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 wanted, to, I wanted to move on so bad. And they wasn't too awful long after that, there was a window of opportunity opened. And that window of opportunity and everything, I, I, I took a volunteer layoff from the company. It was a volunteer thing. Things had got slow. and I took a volunteer layoff. 
And I'd been a, a talking with a friend of mine for a good while about starting a, a handyman business. You know, just starting, you know, just going out and doing things because you know, I was doing it anyway, wasn't getting a lot of prior, uh, uh, pay for it, just helping people, working all the time. Helping people. And I thought, well, I'll start a business. And I stepped out by faith. First of all, I took the, the layoff. I went down there and I signed up uh, to draw my unemployment. I thought, well, I'll, you know, I'll draw unemployment while I'm getting this business off of the ground. First call I'm got. I never think when I put out, put out my little cards and advertised, the first call I got, I made more on that one little job than what I could have drawn in unemployment. Well, when it come time for me to fill out my little card, you know, did you earn any money this week? I wrote down how much I earned uh, and everything. And, and when I sent it back in, they took my unemployment away from me. And I said, what are you doing? I said, this is a waiting week. She said, she said, well, you made more money than what you're going to be able to get. And I never looked back. By faith, I stepped out. And by faith, I said, God, I said, if you don't let the phone ring, God, I don't work. If you don't let the phone ring, I can't make it. Amen. And that phone began to ring. That phone began to ring. Praise his wonderful name. It wasn't too awful long that I was walking around with a thousand dollars in my pocket uh, to buy stuff with if I needed to in my business that didn't have an earmark on it for light bill or phone bill or groceries or, or, or house payments or car payments or anything like that. God not only began to gloriously bless me in that, uh, amen, because I stepped out and, and began to work in faith, amen. And I have the greatest respect for Matthew 6.33 today. Why? Because I saw firsthand what God can do. Friend, God can, God can help you hide down through your life if you'll allow faith to work. Amen. When faith works, I praise God, you'll find yourself in the right place that God wants you to be in. You'll find yourself walking for God, being faithful to God, believing God and trusting God for everything. Now, these men here this morning that's, uh, that's very capable of working a hard day out here on the job. Very capable of that. But if your faith rests in your ability and what you do, and everything else like that right there. It won't be long. Friend, you'll be like me. A few years ago, I, I, could, I, could, I could turn it on. I could work hard. I'm 65. I will be 65 pretty soon. And I'm about half as strong as I was. About half as strong. It don't take me long to wire out now. Amen. But I'm still trusting God. Hey man, I'm still trusting God to walk with me and to counsel my, in my mind and my heart and everything out there. And I'm hoping one of these days, friend, uh, that uh, through all that I've done, I told a fellow the other day, he was talking about the COVID. I said, well, if the COVID takes me out, I guess that's the way God wants me to go out. I said, uh, I hope and pray that somebody, some man of God somewhere will stand around and say, yeah, I knowed him. He trusted God and he loved the Lord and he worked hard on everything. That's, that's about all I can ask for down here, in this, down here in this life. That's about all you and I have this morning. Amen. Uh, to trust God, uh, live godly, work hard, uh, and try to survive. That's what it takes to go on, to move on. Then I thought about this when our, when our hope is founded somewhere else. Look at verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he cometh to God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And I thought I wrote this little thought down here when friend where, uh, says, uh, where is our faith rooted? In other words, you know, what have we put our faith in? Our faith needs to be rooted and grounded in God. Now I'm going to get over in the book of Mark just in a few minutes uh, if the Lord let me. And he looked at a handful of his disciples over there and he said, 
Why is it you have no faith? Amen. Uh, these men were, were, were experienced shipmen. They knew how to drive a boat. They knew how to, whether it was a sailboat or what kind of boat it had or whether it passed, I don't know. But Jesus was in the ship and he was laying back there on the back in sleep. And, uh, you know, these men knew that. And their faith was rooted what? In their own ability. And they began to perish out there. They went and woke up the master and said, Curse not that we perish. And Jesus looked at him and he said, Oh, no faith. You don't, why is it you have no faith? In other words, you know, you men are, you know, I'm with you. I'm here. You know what I can do. You've seen the works of God. Why is it you cannot have faith in that? You and I this morning, now I've never seen Jesus raise the dead. I've never seen Jesus open the eyes of a blinded man. I've never seen him make the lame walk or cleanse a leper or touch the ears of someone that's deaf so they can hear. I never, I, I've never seen that. But by faith through the word of God, I know that he did. And my faith is in what he can do for me this morning. And everything you say, do, do you trust God that much? Yes, I trust God that much. That's all I've got this morning. Uh, amen. Uh, you know, all of my eggs is in one basket this morning. And Jesus has got a hold of the handle of it. And he ain't going to drop it this morning. He, I, I'm, long as I, I mean, I'm right there with, the, with everything that, uh, that I have this morning. My hope uh, in, is resting in uh, Jesus' ability to keep me. Paul said over there, he said, I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. What is that day? Friend, they, uh, there's coming a day when we'll stand before God. And you'll either hear, this, hear these words, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you, or come ye into the joys of the Lord. You've been faithful over a few things, I'll make you rule over many. I like the latter better than the first, don't you? Yeah. It's one thing to know of God, but it's another thing to know God. You say, how do I get to know him? Right there it is, the book. The book will learn you. The book will lead you. The book will guide you on everything you say. Uh, well, I just can't understand a lot of that uh, stuff over there, especially over in the Old Testament and everything over there. Friend, just understand that God put that Old Testament in there and the works of the children of Israel and all that he'd done for them as a schoolmaster to you. You're living in a day of grace. You're not under the law this morning. Uh, you're not having to keep the law today. Now, the, the laws are still in effect uh, man, you know, God don't want us to steal. He don't want us to commit adultery. He don't want us to have any other gods before him. Uh, he don't want, you know, all of these to covet stuff and different things like that right there. The New Testament is based on what those, what those laws uh, brought out there so that you can, we can live a clean, wholesome uh, life through faith in God. And everything, but we're not under the penalty of law. Jesus took the penalty of the law and nailed it to His cross uh, up there, and He ushered in the day of grace. Amen. You and I believe uh, God this morning. This is the Son of God. He's the perpetuation for our sin. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says that He ever maketh intercession for you and I, and because He's there, and we're here, He's watching over us. And, and if we will step into faith. So that's it. Step into faith. If you're, an, if you're a successful businessman, let's just put it that way. If you're a successful businessman this day and time, you had to overcome something. What did you have to overcome? Your inability. You stepped out on faith somewhere or another and said, I'm going to do this. And everything. And faith works like that. That's how, that's how faith works. And everything, you've heard the old saying, and we, we grew up with it around my, my time, look before you leap. Look before you leap on everything. Now, that was real good advice for us because they was copperheads and rattlesnakes thick as flies up around home on everything. You didn't run out through a weed, a weed patch. You took your time and you went through a weed patch. You might run right a straddle of a copperhead 
and everything. There was plenty of them around. We learned that. We learned to live with them. We couldn't get rid of them, so we learned to live with them. We learned to look and have a little faith. Mom and Daddy, they turned us young and loose and said, be careful, watch for snakes. And we just went. He started getting dark, we'd wander back in. I never think, why? We was hungry. We knew that there's food at the house. Amen. God's like kind of a little bit like that for you and I. He brought you into the family of God. You're saved by God's marvelous grace and everything. And he says, now have a little faith and get out there and live your life and do the right thing and walk right with everything like that. And one of these days, you're going to come home. We're going to get to be there with him. And buddy, I'll tell you what, that's, that's good stuff. That is, that's good stuff. Did you realize this morning, friend, that in heaven, there won't be one evil thought? You won't have the capability of having an evil thought. Why? Because the evil one's going to be gone. Did you realize, friend, that when we get over on the other side, that all of us is going to be brothers and sisters, and we're going to know each other, and there's not going to be... uh, this bunch or that bunch or Methodist or Baptist or Presbyterian or wholeness or, uh, or Church of God, uh, Church of Christ. Uh, you know, I mean, you just begin to just name them off. We're not going to be sitting in little quarters over there and everything and say, well, uh, yeah, we're a bunch of them, our uh, uh, Baptist people down here, missionary Baptist and everything. We don't have nothing to do with that much over there. It ain't going to be like that. It's not going to be like that. It'll be by faith that you get there. And then we'll live in our faith to God throughout all eternity. And he'll give us a body that we can do that with. And everything you say, is that worth working for down here? Yes, it was. Look at Enoch. Uh, Look at Abel over there. You know, he offered a more excellent sacrifice. Enoch walked with God by faith. Noah moved with fear. Uh, Amen. By faith, Abraham, uh, when he was called to go out into a strange place, he he, he went to sojourn and everything over there. He he staggered not at the promises of God. Uh, Amen. By faith, Jacob, uh, by faith, Jacob, uh, when he was dying, blessed the sons of Joseph uh, by faith Joseph uh, uh, and by faith Joseph was, uh, made mention that uh, the parting of the children of Israel and gave commandment to take his bones he knew that. I mean, he, he, God had opened it up. He knew that they was coming into a time. By faith, Moses was hid three months uh, by his parents and, and he was a proper child. By faith, Moses, uh, when he was come to years, refused to call, uh, the son of, uh, be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the afflictions of the people uh, that, uh, than to call, uh, that to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. By faith, you and I, and it goes on and on down through there uh, and everything. And then it talks about it down in verse 36. Listen to this. Uh, and others, that's you and I, and others had trials of cruel mocking and scourging, uh, yet moreover of uh, bonds and imprisonment. You say, well, we've never had that. Friend, you don't have to look far. Even in the day and time we live, these children of God suffering for the cause of Christ greatly. These countries around us that's, uh, that's caught up in uh, uh, the, uh, communism and things like that right there where it hits against law, against the laws of the land to be a Christian. It's against the laws of the land to, walk, uh, to show your faith out in public. It's against the laws of the land, see, man? And if you do, you, know, you could be put to death. And we ain't, you know, how in the name of God would anybody desire things like that? But anyway, let's move on. Uh, and he says, they were stoned, they were sawed asunder, they were tempted, uh, they were slain They uh, with the sword. Uh, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being, uh, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Yet they wandered in the desert and in the mountains and in the dens of the caves of the earth, and all of these having uh, obtained a good report. I like that. A good report. Uh, through faith, receive not the promise. Uh, 
God having provided some better things for us than they without, without us should be made perfect. Amen. These, now this is before Jesus Christ came into this world, friend. Uh, these people that he's talking about over there uh, and everything, uh, they, all of them were persecuted for the name of Jesus over there. When you read Matthew over there and you get into that portion of the scripture, the Beatitudes and those things in there where it says, uh, blessed are, the, uh, are the, they that mourn for they should be what? Comforted and everything. Uh, we live in the greatest time that's ever been on this earth. This grace age that you and I live in, the country that God has blessed us to be born into, the freedom that we have to come into this church and to, and to praise God and to lift him up and to, and to give him praise, honor, and glory for all of these things. And everything. This is the best time that we can ever live. If we'll walk by faith and, in, and, and let faith have its perfect work down in our hearts and soul, friend, you can enjoy your journey and you can have the good things of God if you allow God to do it through you. That's the message God's laid on our heart. Amen. I appreciate each one being here this morning. We'll stand to our feet this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, God, I'm so thankful, Father, for each one. God, being here, Heavenly Father, Lord, I trust something was said, God, that, Lord, will be a help to each one. Heavenly Father, Lord, I praise your wonderful name. God, for the Holy Spirit, God, that that you've touched my heart and my soul with. God, I thank you, Lord, for faith. God, for I know it works, Heavenly Father. And, Lord, I thank you and praise you, Father, Lord, for strength. God, watch over each one, Father, and we'll praise you today in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Good night or good day.